It's easy. Speak easy, baby. What would you say, 20 minutes, 30 minutes? Yeah, like a, we did basically an intro Yeah. and got into the JJ stuff. So we, I, you want to dive right back into that real quick? Yeah, we go wherever from this one. Yeah, I don't, I, yeah. it doesn't matter to me. Um, JJ Watt just signed a two-year deal, uh, $31 million, $23 million guaranteed uh, with the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, we, we're kind of just touching on how he's going to be paired with uh, Chandler Jones. Yeah. And, and I guess the resurgence of his career. And, and uh, I mean, what's your take on that one? I think, you know, like, like it, it seems like he's getting taken care of, you know, like from the Cardinals are paying him 23 mil guaranteed, which is more than, you know, either one of us th thought he'd get paid. Yeah. Um, you know, being with the injuries and stuff. But that's like a guy like that in the league. If he, uh, you know, he's carried himself, he's done right by the teams, organizations, cities, you know, that kind of stuff. And so he's he's still getting taken care of. And I think that's only only fair. But, uh, you know, as far as production goes between him and Chandler, only time will tell because we haven't seen either of them really play at a high, high level because of injuries in a little while. You know? Yeah. So. Yeah. Ch Chandler went healthy. That's something we were talking about, too, around one was uh, like tearing shit up. I feel like he's underrated as a, as a pass rusher. Hell, yeah. You know, he's he's like one of those freak athletes on the edge. You know, his his uh, he even said himself in one of the videos, he's like, my my reach is longer than John Jones, like John Jones's reach. Yeah. And John Jones's reach, what, 6'8"? Uh, I'm almost positive it's six eight. Yeah, I think it's eighty four inches. I know. I don't know what yeah. that turns out to like. That's it's like wise, six like, five plus. Anyway, that's tall as fuck, long as fuck. Up. Yeah, and you know, as an edge rusher, and you got arms length like that, that's scary. Yes, and and this is why I think he's on the too. I just pulled up some numbers for him. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, Williams golf twenty nineteen. He got hurt last year. He played five games, started five games for him. Ended the season with one sack, uh, eleven tackles, but. Uh, the year before that, 19. 19 sacks in the season. The year before that, 13. Uh, 2017, obviously the year before that, 17. Double, all the double-digit sack seasons since 2015, uh, before, obviously, 2020, where mm -hmm. he, he had an injury there. Um, yeah, J.J., I'm, I'm not expecting much production-wise, just because looking at his numbers, uh, full 16-game full season for him last year with only five sacks. Mm -hmm. I, I, think, I think the thing is going to bring them – I think he's going to open some, up, some stuff up for Chandler for sure. And obviously, Chandler's already a beast, so, that, I mean, it's going to benefit him either way. But overall, the defense-wise, I feel like the character and leadership that he brings and the hunger to win mm -hmm. and now is going to be. And I think Arizona's already going in a really good direction with, like, character guys in the locker room. Like, they're all playing at super high levels and still staying very team-oriented. Like, D-Hop's been a team guy since he got in the league. You know, yeah. superstar. Like, pretty much as soon as he walked on into the NFL, guy was a bona fide baller. And he's, he's always, from every video or every interview or every, you know, clip that you see of, of DeAndre Hopkins, he's competitive as hell. Yeah. But he's a pro, man. And I think he's rubbing off on Kyler. And I think, you know, there's guys like Buda Baker in the, in the, on the defense that are already, like, you know, acting like pros and stuff like that. So they're already going in the right direction. And then you take JJ and just go like that. You it's know, that's just in. that could send them into the stratosphere. I'm high on Arizona this year, I think, a little bit. Yeah, I'm um, high on shrooms. I'm just kidding. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, no, I, I think um, I think Arizona's going to be one of my favorite teams to watch this year, I would say, for sure. Yeah, yeah I mean, they're super exciting to watch, even like you said before, with Kyler Murray, too, just – Bro, that motherfucking scamper. And it, it, he just looks so quick with his little ass legs out I know. there too, man. It, it's like a, it's like Roadrunner out there. Yeah. Like you can't even see his legs. They're going so fast. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? So, but um, when we, we talked about his, uh, his jump in stats from his rookie year to his second year. And, yeah. and his rookie year didn't have DeAndre Hopkins. I think Hopkins needs a couple more weapons around him, which would even, you know, make him better and, make, and then, you know, make Kyler better as well. So if they can throw – a tight end in that in the mix. I mean, I like their the, the their guy in the slot, um, Kirk. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, Christian you know, Kirk. Yeah, he makes some big plays. He's like a he's like a um, nice little fancy pickup for your boy on a couple of bye weeks. Oh there. yeah, that's a that's a that's a come up because he was, had a, he yeah. had a pretty decent season this year. Hell, hell, a nice season for me, man. But yeah, he and you know he's not gonna like he's not gonna put up D hop numbers, but he's he's gonna do things that are gonna you know open things up for for guys that. Uh, they may be bringing in through the draft or through free agency to yeah. continue or what you know whatever they're gonna do. Yeah, so. that's, what, that, that's what I'm saying. Like the, the big thing to me for this 
for the Cardinals is like the leadership he's gonna bring, even for those guys they're yeah. bringing in too. Like, yeah, it's gonna be good, man. Um, one thing we, we touched on as well was how this affects the Detroit Lions mm. in a roundabout way because now mm. our boy Matty Stafford is gonna be scrambling from, I mean, hopefully prime JJ Watt and and Chandler Jones as well. And you know who that makes look really good is our GM. Oh yeah, that oh. makes this makes him look really good because sure. like to have potentially like if the Rams don't have the season that everybody thinks they're going to have right now, just for podcast sake, right? We'll say the Rams are like, if Stafford has another lion season and goes 500 for the Rams. Yeah. And then those picks become like top 15 picks. Yeah. Which I can see too, because what we didn't bring up in the last, I guess the round one mm-hmm. <laughs> before we got cut off, there was yeah. uh, the fact that the Rams are, are losing their longtime left tackle. I think his name is Jason oh, uh, Whitworth or something. Yeah. Whitmore or something like that. Been in the league forever. Yeah, I'm going to look up two real quick. Um, Rams left tackle. That's what I'm going to type it in. Yeah, but I, I know he's been in the league a long time. Andrew, Andrew Whitworth. Yep, Whitworth. Yeah. 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 He's, he's been a – he's been there since – oh, no, he played for Cincy. Yeah. Sec, second round pick from Cincy in 06. 40 years old, but he also had, went down this year with an injury. Yeah, but he came back and, like – when they were playing in the playoffs, so oh, did they? Yeah, he okay. came, he ended up playing in the playoffs, but I don't think he was like, you know, what he was. Spo- he's you know, yeah. he normally is, but yeah, Bro, no, that was a hell of a career out of out of that guy. Yeah, he says, uh, oh, he tends to return for 2021, so I'm hoping he's not the same same guy he's been known to be throughout his career as at that left tackle position, because yeah. that would definitely benefit the Lions. And and yeah, I think our GM does look good. I think he looked good before that, just because what we were able to get, you know, two first rounders, bro. Like that's like. Mm-hmm. That's fucking. That's awesome. It's that's huge. amazing. Yeah, that, that accelerates a that you know, a, a twenty to thirty um, pick draft pick is a lot different than them guys at like ten to fifteen because you're still potentially picking up guys that I mean obviously down the road in, in the first round those are good guys too but like yeah. you got a couple of guys that are dropping like ten through fifteen that are top five picks a lot of the time. Yeah. And they're just slept on or something. You know? And there's even, like, position guys, too, like uh, – what's, what's the rookie in uh, Minnesota this year? Jefferson. Oh, uh, Justin Jefferson? Yeah, even him. He, he Elite receiver, right? But because at that, you know, that skill position receiver or tight end, you're not really going to take those guys unless mm-hmm. you're the Lions, obviously. <laughs> like, and top ten. Be, but, you know what I'm saying? And, yeah. But they're, they're top-tier talent at that position in that draft. 100%. And they get picked up that, those later rounds. And like, it could be a draft, like, you know, like next year – it's not loaded with quarterbacks, but there's there's enough quarterbacks at the top where one of them guys might fall. Yeah. Or there's a, there's enough quarterbacks in that top five to ten picks that those running backs are dropping, or those edge yeah. rushers are dropping, or yeah. whoever you know is for, there. First so. round pick, no matter where is one through thirty two, is is fire the way because, like you said, for all those you reasons, never know. yeah, you never know. And I don't want this to be the case. I hope that we get our guy this year at quarterback or whatever for the future, mm-hmm. but. Uh, you always package those up and get you something nice. You know, they move up and, and grab the next freaking uh, Trevor Lawrence or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. And, like, I think that um, I mean, it sounds like from our last podcast, obviously you're high on them drafting a quarterback yes. with that pick. Like Trey Lance, you know, who, who if, they can get if, there. If they're there, right? Yeah. But if they're not, trade back, get some more capital. Because, yeah. like, we are in a rebuild situation. We need as much draft capital as we can because we're not a fucking free agent destination. And know? the more, like, I see starting to happen, like, J.J.'s going here and here, it, it, like, pushes me even more to load up on more assets. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. to to just try and build for two years from now instead of five years from now. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? So we'll see. That's the way I envision this for us, too, man. Another thing in the in NFC West – that may be affecting the NFC North is uh, the trade rumors surrounding Russell Wilson. Mm. Uh, he may be – God, I hate hearing this come out of my fucking mouth, bro. <laughs> God damn. It's this, scary. This could be like a third time because we had to do the yeah. whole fucking first – And it, doesn't, it hasn't gotten any better. Oh, my I God. Get, like, the-